In today's video, we're going to be breaking down the current conditions, going over the upcoming stormy pattern and also a pretty flip-flop temperature pattern as well. First things first, we're taking a look here at our current conditions and as you can see we do have quite a bit of storminess going on in the United States first off here for the northwest uh, where we have this pocket of precipitation kind of heading up like this uh, we also have this storminess here stretching all the way from the Gulf of Mexico all the way up to Canada this is going to be moving its way further southeastward so we will see that these areas will eventually be involved later this evening until it's actually offshore of the entire eastern seaboard. So that is going to be what we're expecting at this point. There is also some snow showers up here uh, in the north central United States. Actually, it kind of extends all the way over to here as well. Uh, and then we also have some storminess down here uh, for southern Texas. So let's just go ahead and we're going to start out with our northwestern region of the United States here first off. And there's more isolated precipitation here for the more uh, western regions of Washington and Oregon as you can see um, we do have some snow showers going on here for the Cascades as kind of expected uh, and then mostly rainfall here for the lower elevation regions uh, that's ongoing now we do have a little bit of more persistent rainfall going on out in areas that are a little bit further inland for uh, more eastern Oregon eastern Washington and northern Idaho as well as northwestern Montana uh, these areas are seeing pretty moderate rainfall, uh, and it's it's pretty consistent and persistent. Uh, it's really not stopping in between like these isolated showers are. As we move further south, we can see that we do have some of this showery activity for northern California, northern Nevada, and also southern Oregon ongoing at this point as well. So that's also worth noting. Now, as we move up to the north central United States, you can see this snowfall that is ongoing for these regions. Really, it's pretty isolated out here. Uh, I will say there are some isolated pockets. It's a lot more persistent up here for northern Wisconsin, northern Minnesota, and the upper peninsula of Michigan, uh, where there's a little bit larger areas of snowfall taking place at this point. Now, let's take a look at this area. This has been pretty interesting. Look at the different motions going on over here. Uh, we have it moving like this, and I don't know. I can't figure out what's going on here, guys, uh, but very, very odd motions. Uh, up here, it's more like isolated, scattered showers and thunderstorms. Down here in very far southern Texas and even down into a bit of Mexico, we can tell that this is a lot more persistent with that very, very heavy rainfall and thunderstorms. Uh, so it makes sense the more tropical you get here, the more heavy and tropical those thunderstorms are feeling at this point basically now as we move up to the northern region or better yet the southern region of that cold front we can see that these are actually building in uh, as we speak uh, these are more in the form of isolated and scattered showers down here it's a lot more persistent with those showers up here uh, for Tennessee even down through portions of Alabama as well at this point let me make sure there's no... Okay, well, the, the Florida Keys are seeing some isolated thunderstorms. Maybe even southern Florida can't be rolled out. So all of these regions are seeing some of those isolated thunderstorms and showers, uh, which is definitely worth noting. Uh, but that's happening almost every other day uh, this time of year. So as we move up to the middle portion of this cold front, we can see Kentucky, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and Ohio uh, all involved here. Even Western Virginia, they're the western portion of normal Virginia, <laughs> I don't know. Virginia itself, I don't know, uh, East Virginia, I don't know, uh, we see that this is fairly persistent as well up here, we see yellows and oranges popping up, it's a little bit more scattered here for Pennsylvania and New York here as we can see, uh, but in the southern region it's a lot more persistent, but this is heading northward towards that area that's less filled out, so I expect some filling out to happen for this area over the next few hours. And then as we move up, up northward towards New England, we can see this was more persistent, but it's actually headed north more towards Canada. Uh, this should re-enter back into northern Maine, though, uh, and it will become a lot more persistent through here uh, for the next little while of this storm. So I think that basically covers all of it. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to move on towards that model of guidance and just take a look at the upcoming pattern. Now, here we are taking a look at that upcoming pattern. I just want to move it on to where we're looking at about right now. We can see this cold front going on up here. We see the storminess down here for southern Texas and northern Mexico. We see the snowfall. We see the storminess up here for the northwest. We're seeing all the features that we're actually seeing in real life. 
This is going to be by time we're reaching about 11 p.m. tonight. We can see this is all reaching the east coast or passing the east coast. A lot of this snowfall moves up into the lower peninsula of Michigan, so it's spreading further eastward. And we see some of this precipitation make its way further eastward here uh, into Montana and Wyoming as well for the northwest. Uh, let's go ahead and keep moving on with this. We do see some snowfall develop up here for the northeast. A lot of the snowfall down here lifts off up into Canada and basically subsides. Uh, we do see some storminess try to take place here in the central United States, so that's definitely, definitely worth noting uh, that we could be seeing some severe weather by mid to late week uh, this week. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday time frame, a little bit more activity starts to get going. Uh, in my opinion, that's what the look is at this point. We can see more snowfall and rainfall moving onshore to the northwest, so more activity spreading into those parts. Uh, let's see. As we continue this on, we see that more heavy snowfall develops here for the northern Rockies. We see more rainfall and thunderstorms basically developing here uh, east of this low for the most part. Uh, so we see this is by the time we're reaching Friday. So I'm really watching for severe weather on Friday for a lot of these regions. Basically anywhere east of the low. Uh, or north of it really is looking at some potential for severe weather. So east and north of that low uh, on Friday, we're watching for that activity. I think especially into here, it's going to be possibly a pretty tricky situation. So at the 992 by that point, 995 by this point, we do see some snowfall moving up into here. Rainfall along this line, even down into the Carolinas there. Uh, by time we're reaching about Friday or Saturday mid morning, late morning, maybe 11 a.m. on Saturday, April 30th. Here, let's continue this on towards Sunday afternoon. And look at this we get a bit of a uh, summer like pattern in the east where there's just these isolated thunderstorms taking place all over the place. A thunderstorm cannot be ruled out for anywhere in the southeast, really, or even the eastern half of the country here by this point, 2 p.m. on Sunday, May 1st. Uh, and that continues on. Look, this is by the time we're reaching Tuesday. Just storminess all throughout these regions. Some snowfall for the Rockies with a 997 millibar low pressure center. So that's the interesting thing about this time of year in the spring. It, that's unlike the summer. Uh, is we get those stronger lows moving across the country. A lot more like what you see in the fall and the winter time. So in the springtime, we get some of those summer-like features like the heat and the thunderstorms and all that, but we still get those strong lows uh, that are mostly featured in the wintertime. And I think that's a lot to do with why we see such strong severe weather this time of year. And look at this one, 990, uh, we get another classic low here. Uh, warm front up here, cold front dangling down. This could be our next severe weather outbreak as we approach Wednesday the 4th, that's going to be of May, towards Thursday the 5th, uh, and probably even beyond. So we'll be watching for this entire corridor here uh, maybe even further north uh, for this event. Yeah, because as we approach Thursday into Friday, we do get some of that activity in here. The good news is that this model indicates it's going to be fairly quick moving, but we do see our next low trying to move into the northwest by this point, and this is the end of the model run. So this could be pulling down uh, by this point and then eventually swinging back up as our next major low. So we'll be watching for that very, very closely. Now let's take a look at the total snowfall in the entire model run here. And as you can see, uh, we have a ton of snowfall expected for the mountainous regions here in the west. And then kind of for this region up here, we also expect some snowfall. Uh, so I'm just going to break down the color codes. If you're anywhere in the grades, it's going to be a dusting, if anything. Blues will be 2 to 6 inches of snowfall. Purples will be 6 to 10. Pinks will be 10 to 20. Pastel blues are going to be 20 to 30. And then pastel purples, which we see some of that for Idaho, Montana, even Oregon there. You can spot some of those. That's going to be 30 to 48 inches plus of snowfall. So a ton of snowfall expected out west. And that's basically all we have to go over on this snowfall forecast for the next 10 days. I'm thinking about including the total rainfall in these videos. So if you think that I should do that, leave a comment down below. Or if you think I shouldn't do that, also leave a comment down below. Uh, because I've been adding the total snowfall in each video. But maybe we should do the total rainfall for the next, you know, for each 10 day period. Uh, during each video. Let me know if that's something you'd be interested in or you think would be useful because that's definitely something that I could do. Let's go ahead and talk about the upcoming temperature pattern though. Now here we are taking a look at those temperature anomalies and at this point we see a bit of a ridge in the west, a huge trough in the central United States, and then a large ridge in the eastern United States. This is all going to come to an end 
uh, by the time we're reaching the high temperatures tomorrow because really we see more of a jet stream that looks like this. Uh, big trough in the east, ridge in the central-ish United States, and then a little bit of a trough there in the northwest uh, is really the look by tomorrow. Uh, by the time we reach Thursday, April 28th, we're going to be seeing a very similar pattern there. Very cold in the east, very cold in the west, warm for the plains. That's the that's the trend here. By the time we reach Friday, it's the same story. Uh, basically trough, trough, trough ridge, trough type pattern, I guess you could say. Uh, Saturday, we could see things are trying to inch eastward with this ridge. I noticed that when I was looking at this before I made this video. Uh, the, it really is inching eastward by this point. And then by the time we reach 2 p.m. on Sunday, uh, something interesting is happening. You can tell that this ridge is really trying to center itself over the eastern United States, and this trough is trying to center itself over the western United States. That's a pattern change taking place. And by this point, we could tell what the pattern is. Uh, it, it really is a ridge in the east, fully engulfed now. Uh, with most of this cold air entering into the western United States. And, and really, this was not expected until about yesterday. But it, get, it gets a lot more persistent here. Where we're in a very clear-cut pattern. Very cold air making its way all the way down to southern California, down into Mexico. But on this end, we see very warm air making its way up, on, uh, even into ca uh, Canada there. So very, very warm pattern to start May out is a, is a big possibility at this point, it looks like. Probably the warmest air of the year. We've been kind of one-upping each warm-up for the past couple of weeks, which is to be expected this time of year. Obviously, your average temperature is going up, so each time we have a warm-up, uh, it's easier and easier to get hotter and hotter air, uh, obviously. And uh, particularly this frame on Thursday uh, would be extremely hot for the eastern United States as there's likely uh, a cold front moving in like this, finally bringing this to an end. That's Thursday, May 5th. Uh, that would be very, very hot most likely. And probably Friday would feature still this warm air along the eastern seaboard. But that's basically all, all we have for now. It's interesting how over the last three days this model has gone from showing almost un entirely cold for the eastern United States to now just a couple of days of a cool down and then primarily warmer air over the next 10 days. So we are likely moving into a warmer pattern to begin May uh, for the first at least five days of May. Uh, is the look at this point, which for most people this time of year that are over the winter is good news. So yeah, uh, we expect warmer air to return. Now let's go ahead and go go into this storm prediction center, just break down each day's outlook. Now for the day one categorical outlook, we have a ton going on here. We have multiple general thunderstorm risks. Uh, one there for Washington and Oregon, one here for Oregon, Idaho, and Montana, one here for New Mexico, one here for Texas, and then one here for the Southeast. So that's four general or five general thunderstorm risks that's probably a record on the channel here from what we've seen uh for the southeast that we do have a marginal risk within there too for georgia south carolina north carolina virginia and a tiny bit of maryland as well so we're going to be watching for isolated severe weather taking place within that region uh, that's just where stronger thunderstorms are expected later this evening it's going to be pretty late this evening i expect now for day two we also have a marginal risk, but it kind of flips sides. We see it more for the central United States, where we also have a very large general thunderstorm risk. And down here for Florida, we also have a general thunderstorm risk. The general thunderstorm risk area, again, is where general thunderstorms are expected, but severe weather can never be basically ruled out. So you're going to want to heed every single watch, warning, and advisory, regardless of what risk you're in, uh, and just be paying attention. The marginal area, again, is where we expect isolated severe weather to take place. Now, for day three, we see basically the same thing, except we only have this one general thunderstorm risk here and this one marginal risk in here. Then, for day five, we do have, or better yet, it might be day four now. Look at that. I done goofed up, guys. Here we go. Day four, Friday, April 29th. I thought it was day five for some reason, but it's actually day four. Uh, we have a 15% chance of severe weather here for Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Missouri, Kansas, and Nebraska, as well as a little county in Iowa there. Uh, we expect at least a slight risk to take place in this region by time we're reaching Friday, April 29th. So be on the watch out for that. We're going to be tracking this over the coming days. So tune in with us daily as we break down all of these things here on the channel. For today's confidence tab, we're at a four out of six. Obviously, we still have a couple of days before we're moving towards these major events, so that's why I feel that way. For today's patron, 
Highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum Patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovi Nagel, Little Pan, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donna Carnes as well. I would also thank our Diamond Patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Kudalasa, Capite, Charles Stinnett, Bill Dallas, Garys, and John Khaleesi also. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Capite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.